Welcome to the gathering at the Cosmic Fire 2024 Summit, a celebration of the source of our awakening. Whether you were nurtured by Earth-based wisdom your entire life, you were blessed to meet a teacher along your path, or you're listening here today on the threshold of something new, each one of us has been gifted an opportunity to awaken more deeply in every moment and to be of sacred service. Together, we are embarking on an amazing adventure around the cosmic fire, honor shamanic earth-based healers, teachers, and wisdom keepers from around the globe will share their stories of awakening, each offering beauty and illuminating wisdom and medicine ways that may be our most valuable natural resource. The gathering is brought to you by Shaman's Directory, an online global platform dedicated to bringing shamanic earth-based services to the world's doorstep. At Shaman's Directory, we are committed to honoring the earth's living lineages, the medicine people and communities who invite our human family to heal and to awaken to a better, more kind, more sustainable way forward. I am Yumi Beckers, one of your hosts at the Cosmic Fire, and I'm truly delighted to welcome Isaac Berry. Welcome. Thank you very much for having me back. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure to have you here as well, Isaac. And before we begin, for those of you who don't know Isaac and his work, I want to take a moment to share a little bit more about him. Saita Itzak Berry is an acclaimed author and internationally respected shamanic teacher, healer, speaker, and trip leader. Raised in an Israel kibbutz, he had a fine art career and owned an ad agency in New York City. A midlife crisis led him from a set skeptic into a dedicated spiritual seeker. Since 1995, he has integrated the teachings from his indigenous and Western teachers and committed to passing them on to a new generation of healers. He was initiated into the circle of 24 Yachaks of Imba Buddha in Ecuador and with the Amazonian Kamamari Page in Brazil. Itzak founded shamanportal.org, the Endless Summit, and SPQR, Shaman Portal Quarterly Review Magazine, and co-founded the New York Shamanic Circle and Amaru Sanctuary in Mindo, Ecuador. He received the Ambassador for Peace Award from the Universal Peace Federation and the United Nations. And the topic for our conversation today is Awakening the Now, the Role of Shamanic Wisdom in Our Current Time. So again, welcome. The, that topic of transformation uh, or awakening is uh something that I was very much interested uh, in. Um, I had that experience in 1995, I think it was, uh, on the big island of Hawaii um, after a sweat lodge. And uh, I was totally unprepared for that. I was totally, I was not a, doing a shamanic work. I mean, I took a workshop or, or two, but not in any way um, going deeper into it. And um, I was following that moment um, with a lot of interest with, with other people to see what, what happened to them. So um, in my second book, uh, I made a collection of uh, essays from a uh, personal essays, um, a personal stories of quite well-known uh, shamans, um, because I really was curious to see uh, what, how it happened to people. What, what is the mechanic or the situation, the circumstances that happen that brings people to, into uh, uh, a eureka moment or transformation or the awake, what we call awakening? And um, if you if you buy that book, I could, you could probably get. It. A lot of uh, beautiful stories uh, from really very well-known uh, shamans uh, talking about that moment. But I think, and that is really the biggest lesson that I learned. Maybe I'm preempting the whole uh, conversation uh, now, but 
um, I got also got a few accounts from indigenous uh, shamans uh, because I wanted to know not just what Western people experience. Uh, that's interesting, but it's not. It wasn't something that I was only looking for. Uh, people from our own society, from our own culture, uh, experiencing a moment of enlightenment. So I, I was reaching out for indigenous people to write uh, this personal account. And I got an apology uh, letter, uh, email from uh, one of the shamans, the indigenous shamans, saying to me, you know, I, I, I'm really, really sorry, but um, I wrote this uh, article for you and uh, but I, w I just wanted to tell you that um, I just don't have one because in our indigenous culture every moment every second is that moment of awakening and I was not expecting that which is like again uh, not very clever of me <laughs> but I uh, um, You know, I hope that all of that uh, broadcast that we are we are doing uh, bring that idea that every moment of our life we can choose to be awakened, uh, or every moment that of our awakened moment. Uh, need to be awakened because every moment is a, an opportunity. Every moment is a is a way uh, for us to change our perspective, our understanding of the world. Uh, we cannot wait for the awakening to happen on the Himalayas or in your kitchen or in a in a lake or in the forest or in a sweat lodge like it happened to me. Uh, we can't just wait the whole life for being awakened. Our life is made out of aha moment, and every moment is aha. Every moment is a, an opportunity to reconnect with the mystery, with the uh, magic, with uh, the beautiful. Uh, experience of uh, of godness, and so uh, that question of uh, awakening is a very eagle mind question. Is <laughs> a very much from the people of the the mind, or the what we call the eagle people, or you can say it's the Western civilization. Um, question how do i get awakened um, i don't think that we need to really get awakened as much as i need we need to remember the magic of life the aha moment the awe the marvelous of being in marvel being in that excitement of every moment of our life even just drinking water even just doing dishes or doing the most mundane things, um, which is kind of like interesting because uh, I was just now in Yucatan and visiting a friend of mine who is a sham Mayan shaman in the middle of the jung jungle. And um, so <laughs> I took on myself the most sacred mission in the morning is to um, broom the yard from the leaves and from the other <clears throat> um, gift that the, the dogs and the cats and the and the um, chickens uh, left behind in, uh, overnight, and this is like the most sacred uh, work I could have done for an hour or so every morning. I was like sweeping Mother Earth, the skin of the earth. I was looking at all the leaves that fell from the trees and um, reminds me of the people that lived behind before me that they they separated from the main tree and now becoming the food or the nutrition for uh, the new generation 
Um, I was looking at all the other things that happened that came from the animals that were fertilizing the earth. But I was really was very conscious that um, I am not just sweeping the floor. I, I, did, I was not a victim or <laughs> of sweeping the floor. I took this opportunity. And then I think that that is what the, the moment of awakening is, is really living in that moment that uh, when you walk on the earth, you put your weight on Mother Earth, on the skin of the earth, and the, the, that entity of the earth feel that and know that. And the same thing that you do, so you create relationship. And I think that that, that is uh, the living in a the, in the moment, in a in recognition that every moment is a moment where you can reconnect with the, the magic of the cosmos, of creation. Um, you are not uh, asleep. You are not just doing auto automatic uh, actions. You are uh, fully present in the creation of the earth. Uh, that is, a, for me, it's, that's the moment of awakening. Moments of I yeah I agree that we can be every day awakened and it's every day an opportunity and I think it's a, such a beautiful and important message that you have just conveyed right now. Thank you. And I also want to say something here because I kind of can relate to your bio as well as I've been in advertising myself before embarking on my awakening or shamanic path, right? And it is quite a drastic change of, you know, our life path and our destiny, basically. And I just want to ask you if you could tell us something about your awakening journey and how you came onto this shamanic path. So my story is... Um... You know, I was doing advertising for a long time in uh, New York City. I had my own advertising agency, which is, uh, it sounds wonderful, but, uh, and, and, and it was wonderful. It was like a boutique, very creative boutique agency. We were like called by the Advertising uh, Association, um, the four A's. Uh, we were the bad guys of advertising <laughs> in the 90s, you know, like in the 80s, 90s. We created like really, strong, powerful ad. And I was very proud of it. Um, we won many advertising awards uh, and design awards for logos, for branding, for other radio, television. But, uh, um, you know, after a while, I was, um, I was disillusioned. And, um, you know, one, one part of me, and, and this is the shaman part of me, of me uh, wanted to deliver messages of humanity, of healing, of, you know, like what I do now, basically. But I wanted to do it through the, the medium of advertising, which is like wonderful. It's a, it's a beautiful way of doing it. But then, you know, I... I I couldn't do any more ads for Gucci and Revlon and, and for Gamo and, <laughs> and Elal and Banks and uh, the thing that are truly nobody needs, truly nobody needs. You don't really need Gucci shoes uh, every Christmas. And I, I started to, to feel like I'm like a, a peon in all that machinery of uh, of uh, the industrial complex <laughs> and i got into really depression um and um in 94 95 i think um i was invited to uh hawaii and uh, i took but totally by mistake or coincidence uh i went to barnes and noble to buy uh, a book on the trip to hawaii and i saw a book that has have a illustration of Hawaii and, and it says Hawaii and it, it was a book by Hank Wasserman and I read that book and I said 
started to cry on the plane, you know, because he was like talking about stuff that I was thinking or feeling or knowing and kind of remind me of, uh, of, of my journey in a way. Um, I didn't know Hank, you know, we became friends after that. But um, so I went to Hawaii and uh, I, I did a workshop there and which opened me up and then, uh, oh yeah, and it, um, that was like uh, in Kalani Honua to, to have a little uh, commercial for them. Uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful retreat. Um, and uh, I was also teaching goals, how to achieve your, your life goal. <clears throat> and um, we had a, a sweat lodge, which was my first ever sweat lodge. And it was uh, very beautiful and powerful. And the mo in the morning before everybody got up and I went into now what opened sweat lodge and i was sitting there and i consider that to be my big moment of awakening because i really felt it for the first time i felt that energy from the earth coming through my behind and merging with this energy line of energy that came from above and they all created like a, an energy body all around me with, made out of uh, strings. And it's the first time that I really felt that I'm one, one with the universe. And I remember distinctly that um, I was in awe. Uh, and I, for the first time, I think I understood that there is no need to be fe fearful or afraid because we are all protected by light or by this energy of uh, that comes from above and below. And that is actually uh, the basis of my work. I mean, that is also basis of the <laughs> the indigenous people from Ecuador that I study with. That is the, the, the deep connection that we have between Mother Earth and Father Son. And that, that body of light that is uh, penetrating from, uh, from our legs all the way up, that in many ways we are like the trees. That we are the, the manifestation of that and that we are all uh, one, connected, protected, uh, I never felt more um, peaceful and relaxed, or it's not really relaxing, like more like um, I knew that everything is perfect the way it is. And that it did change me. I mean, I really never talked about it. <laughs> of course, not in, in podcast. Uh, but uh, but it was uh, such a moment. And the beauty of all of it is that there was nobody there. Uh, I was just sitting, you know, in that sweat lodge structure, unprotected, uncovered, um, and the smell of the sweat of and dreams and pain and cries of the man that was sitting there before at night was still there in the air. You can really feel that, that, that energy that they dispersed. Um, yeah, there was a, a really, a, a just a um, special moment. I mean, you can, you can give it like a very beautiful, uh, description, but it was a very powerful, simple, elegant, but incredibly opening up the consciousness to understand that we are all we are all talking about that we are all one, we are all the same. You know? But it's very different to feel it, to really know it. 
uh, in your physical body. And I think that that's one of, one of the, the things that is so separate between our shamanic work and uh, many people in the new age uh, industry. Um, we don't really need to believe in that. Uh, we experience it. Uh, we embody that knowledge. And when you experience and embody that, you don't really need to explain that. You don't really need to um, give it like names or or gods and goddesses or whatever it is. You know, just like you know, a lot of that uh, chakras and all of that stuff that is like mm -hmm. you just like own it, and you know it. It's in your body. It's in your in your life experience. And um, so the, I think that that moment was really very, and, and I think it was, a, it was just at the, almost at the time where I gave up on advertising, <laughs> gave up on my old life. Um, um, and I was not yet aware of where it's going to take me. Um, I, I, I hardly ever knew the word shaman at that time. I only read it in, in, my, in the Hank Wasserman uh, book. Um, and then in that book, there was a, a, a description of a workshop uh, by Michael Horner uh, that uh, Hank uh, took. So I, um, when I came back to New York, I um, happened Michael, Michael Hunter happened to come in, to New York and do a, giving a workshop and a uh, weekend workshop. And we learned, we learned to connect to the you know, power animals like upper world, lower world, middle world. And I was, that was another moment, moments of, wow, you know, the thing that I dream, the thing that I see actually have an implication for the people that I do it for. And I can really help them. Uh, and it became, I was like really excited about that. And um, then I was invited to come with John Perkins to Ecuador. And in Ecuador, I had many of those uh, moments. Um, also in the Andes doing La Limpia work or the regular uh, healing work. Regular for me, <laughs> not for other people. But uh, um, and then also Ayahuasca or Matem with the schwa. And yeah, so um, I look at it more that the, the moment of the discovery of the miracles of secrets of the universe never really stopped. It's uh, continuing to be uh, an element that is driving me too, because I think that a lot of this work that we do is about um, reconnecting with your curiosity or with the seeker in you. You can't stop seeking because once you start seeking, I get bored and then I get distracted. But some, <laughs> some people just do other things, you know, drink, do other it's the idea of living with a curious mind with the open heart with accepting the possibility understanding that uh, all those difficulties all the issues that come your way it's a mo it's it's really a, a, a uh, teachings opportunities that it is about living openly with your uh, understanding that that life that you chose to live is is the uh, is that your soul came here to experience and so it is about accepting that and accepting that every everything that comes your way is a teaching not necessarily uh, 
bad things, although it might sound like bad things. And believe me, I have my share, of course, of, of doing that. <clears throat> but that is for me the, the, the uh, uh, and then of course, it, every, every time that you take, you, you drink ayahuasca or yahe or natem or other wachuma or whatever it is, there's always a places to explore, a places to go deeper, to travel into the cosmos, to see other cosmos behind the cosmos and to receive information from uh, places where it, you never even imagine that exist. Yeah, so I think that it's a, it's a, it's such a beautiful journey, a journey of, uh, of um, curiosity, of discovery. <laughs> beautiful. Thank you for sharing. And also this initial powerful awakening moment, I could really feel it. And that experiencing this like completely, right, is so important. And um, I also love all these other experiences that you have shared and i know that you have also done so many so much in your lifetime already in this shamanic journey as you're an author and a shaman and teacher and you're running shaman's portal which is a, a big resource on shamanism for the world basically and um and I also know that you've done so many works and experiences. And I just wonder if you could share maybe one particular story or experience or challenge that you may have to overcome that could inspire people to awaken or to you know explore more of their curiosity as well on their path. <clears throat> you know, I went into what we call today shamanism, um, not because I wanted to be a shaman. And believe me, I never thought that I have any talent of becoming a healer. <laughs> uh, I went in spite of that, um, in spite of my fears and my rejections and, but, uh, I went in, I, I become that, became that because I really wanted to serve. Um, so, because I knew the effect that it had on me, uh, my way of giving thanks to the people that facilitated like the shamans or the my, my teachers <laughs> um at that time they were not my teachers but uh was to support them i also received messages from above about that about uh, preserving the amazon and the people who live there and the, the indigenous culture and I did not have any idea of what it, what it means. Never, never thought it ha has anything to do with me or how how I, advertising man, can do that. You know, it wasn't really even in my um, future plan. Short terms, long term, never been even, never thought about that. But I really felt, my heart felt, I want to support them. I wanted to service them, to help them in any way I could, which is, wasn't that much, but I wanted to do that. And so that, that's why I, um, um, I started to support them, to help them to, bring them to the United States to do workshops and teachings and healing. And I was just assisting them. I was, I was not even, never really thought that I would do this work. Actually, when my teacher, though, Jose Joaquin Pineda from Ecuador, um, he um, suggested that I will, that I need to start doing healing. I was like, mm -mm, no, no. 
I'm not ready for that. I mean, it's, I'm not. I, I didn't see myself at all as a as a person that can do healing. I thought other people have special gifts, but not me. I can help, but I know. And um, so for three years, he was pushing me to, to, to do healing work. And for three years, I re totally rejected it. I mean, if he comes today, I would probably re reject him. <laughs> but anyway, um, it turned out that uh, one, of, one of the guys who went on a trip with me in 1997 um, had a birthday party and he wanted me to do a healing for him and I pushed him away pushed him away and then um, after a month or so I said all right all right I'll try that and the moment I did it I, I felt home I felt like it was just so natural uh, came from a place that I just didn't know existed. And um, then another friend and another friend and slowly, slowly, slowly more people came and I started to, uh, you know, I brought all more shamans to New York to teach and um, you know, the, the gathering of shamans in Omega with uh, John Perkins and I assisted them and um, and I, at that time, I met uh, Ipo Piara, the shaman from uh, the Uru Uwawu tribe from uh, Brazil. And I, he was a friend mentor for 12 years after that, uh, until he passed. So um, my message really is about um, do something that even if you don't think that would lead to anywhere, just take the step because you really never know where that first step will take you. If you ask me in 1995, seven, eight, two, 2000, 2002, if all of that five, seven years that I were like involved, but I'd never really had any kind of a thought of like myself as a, as a shaman or healer, uh, I would never imagine that I would write books, that I would travel the world, that I would teach, that I would do healing, that I, you know, no, 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 no. That, that was like, that's somebody else's work. Uh, but it happened, you know, and, um, and I, you know, like, um, in my um, every every new year, I sit uh, and do meditation, and but I never ask for anything. I I ask the universe to guide me, to show me where I'm needed, or what needs to happen that I could be of help or service to other people. And so. Uh, if you can live from that place of true service uh, or being open to the changes and and it's not easy. I'm not saying that it's easy because uh, most people really want to know where their paycheck will come from, where they live, if the security, especially like me, you know, I have. I have three kids, eight grandchildren. I I need to know that I can support them, or you know. But uh, but I think that if you can live in that openness and that uh, living in a place like where like what I said, it, that we are all one and the same and protected by the, those energy and the forces. Um, that knowing, it's not a belief. It's not like a, I'm, I'm religiously think that God will protect me. But I think that knowing or experiencing that give you that um, courage to 
not hold on to what you know, but let go and experience the unknown. And the unknown have a lot more imagination than we do. <laughs> yes, that's very encouraging, I think, for everyone to step into the unknown. And right, there's so many things that can happen and things that you can overcome and grow into and that there's so much potential in each one of us. And thank you for sharing that experience. I really didn't know that it was such a challenging journey to become a healer for you in this way. So it was great to hear. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I think that, that you know, um, I was always curious about all these spiritual stuff. I, 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 I want. Uh, but I always felt that those spiritual gifts are given to special people. Only special people are born with that, but it's not me. And I think that uh, in many ways, it's, it's kind of like a beautiful exp uh, personal experience because it always keeps you humble. Uh, it, it doesn't it doesn't make you cocky or, or like too sure of yourself. And um, I'm a little always a little skeptic of people who just want to be shaman or they want to be healers. Um, I'm not belittling it, but I'm, I, I feel like there is sometimes you too much of a ego part of about that. Um, I want to be a shaman because shaman is like cool or sexy or important or powerful or colorful with all the feathers, you know, over there. <laughs> or, yeah. But it, I never felt like that. And, and um, also when I do healing work, I never, I'm never sure that this time it's going to work. Um, yeah, so it keeps keeps you more on your toes and more humble. Uh, and more in ah, oh, in the wondrous. I and I still do. Like every time that I do healing work and I see the spirit or see other entities that are coming or whatever it is. And it's very, it, it becomes a, a very common experience. But every time it just fills me with surprise. I'm always in that awe moment when I meet, meet with people. But I also, I think that that, and I think that is important that in the same way that I experienced that beam of light that can penetrate for me inside me as a beam of light and created that protection strings all around me. Each, each of us is like that. And I think that when we come, when we do healing work, or when we work with another human being or animal uh, to do healing work, we have to hold that concept that those people, those they may be broken now, but but they are they are that uh, construct of God or Godness. Um, and that's why, like a lot of the um, you know, I learn a lot of toolbox, you know, like a lot of techniques, uh, which I teach now uh, a lot of people. But at the end, I want to say like like uh, my my two main teachers, Gopiara and Jose Joaquin Pineda, um, they were always, always remind me that you can you can have a lot of tools, a lot of teachings and techniques and but at the end is the love that you feel in your heart toward the other creature who was created by God. So 
in many ways, when you do a healing work, is is like the you and the person is the same, the same creation of God, or the meeting the two of or the energies, which is basically one. And so the the, the healing in that way is the recognition that you are standing in front of God and you are sharing love, you're sharing that energy of love. And that really heals a lot of people. Um, it's, of course, you have to know the technique. I'm not, say, I'm not poo-pooing the techniques and the, all the teachings uh, that goes with it. Um, I, I'm, I'm quite well known <laughs> about that. But, and I'm also very strict about the technique. But it's, it's really above and beyond that. And I think that that also a moment of awakening is that knowing that it is not what you actually know, the tool book, toolbox that you are using, but it's really a place where you connect with that darkness. And you are standing in awe. Yeah. That's a beautiful teaching that you're sharing with us. Um, and I think I want to sort of go to my last or bigger question is about um, what are your thoughts about where we are right now at the level of consciousness and in our evolution? And if there's any message that you would like to share to our audience further? Uh we have explosion of pe people from all over the world that are seeking new experience to be in the ah uh, moment in or you can call it awakening so i just want to connect it to the prophecy of the condor and the eagle that came from uh that i heard from uh Taita Don Alberto Tazzo from Ecuador uh, many years ago. <laughs> uh, actually, 20, 24 years ago, something like that. So, in, that, in 1493, the Spaniard killed the, the, the emperor of the Inca. And with that began 500 years of Pachacuti because the Inca were co uh, counting time in period of time of 500 years. So there's, a, there's days, there are months, there are years, and then there are period of time. And the period of time is a period of consciousness. It's hard to put it in words, but it's more like a how time space holding itself or the consciousness of human being on this particular earth and the, the prophecy was of the of that is that the, um there will be a new beginning a new 500 a new 500 years begin in 1993 500 years after the the beheading of uh of atualpa um and pachacuti mean correction of time so a new time begin the period of time that took between the killing of uh atualpa and the full occupation of spain of south america took about 80 years uh we are now in 1993 we, are, we need to really wait for 80 years for the full embodiment of the new Pachacuti. And what the new Pachacuti means is that the condor, which represent the heart of uh, South America, the culture of South America, and the eagle, which uh, uh, symbolize the Western industrial uh, uh, 
hemisphere shall, of uh, the Western, Northern, um, will be flying together as the two birds in a, in a dance of harmony and peace uh, and cooperation. Um, and the, the return, or not, not the rise, but the return of the feminine energy to the earth or celebrating the earth energy back again. And that really referred to the idea that the, the last Pachakuti uh, was domination, industrialization, wars, killing. There was no, more people died in the last 500 years than in all civilization combined. We had the, war, the world war, we had the, the, the decimation of South America, which is 90% of, of the millions and millions of people who live there, the indigenous people died, which is the biggest than any uh, genocide that ever happened made by the Spanish people and um, the European people who conquer uh, South America. So the next 500 years would be the return of the feminine energy. And in that prophecy, it says that in 1993, 500 years after the fall of the Inca, the shamans will start teaching their wisdom. They will feel a new energy to start teaching or sharing their wisdom with the eagles, with the, with the uh, Western world. And the Western world will start sharing their uh, uh, know-how with the people of uh, South America, which is exactly what happened now. But more so, uh, we can see that many of the institutions of the United of the of the Western world uh, are falling apart. Uh, government, church. The health insurance stuff, health industry, people are disappointed in the way that uh, masculine energy were held in the world. And they are looking for a replacement or the return of the feminine, the heart centered. And um, if you look around, you could see that there's more women now in the Congress and the Senate and um, even the Vice President and uh, but not only and not only in the United States all around the world, women power and I'm not talking about just women women but uh, because some women could be more masculine than men, but uh, but also the feminine within a man or the masculine within the woman. So it, it is more about the synergy between the two. Not it's not but it's not to make one person ball and um, uh, a, a male and female together but it's to have both each of them separately but cooperating and living in balance however uh the reason why it's 80 years is because those who held power for such a long time don't give it away easily and we can actually experiencing it now. We actually see how the old people from Hungary to Turkey, from Philippines to all of those, North Korea, China, they are all men and they are all fearful of losing their power and money. And until those people um, release their nails from the wall <laughs> until they start to let go and understanding that they really don't, that power is not about greed or owning more money or more industries or industries or more weapons. It is power come from sharing, from peace. And so that generation has to die. And we are now in the middle of this 80 years of change. And those 80 years uh, 
become very difficult because we are in the turbulence of that storm. We really don't know where it's going to take us because of all that craziness all around us. So they create chaos all around us so we cannot find our groove. But I think that it, for us as teachers or elders um, is to keep being optimistic. And I'm, I'm very optimistic because I can actually see, you know, there is a rhythm to life which we don't really see on a daily basis, but if you can do an arch from the time I was born uh, to where we are now, you can actually see in great um, advancement. I'm not saying that there's no going back a little bit like a reactionary because of the fear of uh, losing control. But uh, in my lifetime, I never thought that two guys can get married or we, two women could get married. You know, this is a, it was a, a world of fantasy, but it's a reality. It's a change of consciousness. I ne nobody can ever imagine that we would have a black president, and we had that, or what, black vice president, and we have that, or the woman who sits in the head of the, the Congress. So there is a lot of changes that are happening, or like, you know, solar energy, Everybody poo pooed it. It's becoming a reality. Is it fast enough for me? No. Do I want to do it faster? Absolutely. But it has to have time because those people who are holding consciousness of greed and fear, you have to be sympathetic with them too. You cannot. Uh, you cannot uh, poo-poo this their fear. They're holding on to years, years of ingrained fear in their body that the only way to be happy is to own a military or amass more money for, for no reason. But that, that's the change of consciousness that we are experiencing now. And that is, that's why I think that people from 1993 are, we are all agents of this change. We're becoming more, bigger numbers all around the world that politicians or thinkers or think tanks or whatever it is um, will have to take in account. I think that's the role that um, our shamanic uh, teaching need to be focusing on. Um, as more people are fed up with uh, religion that dictate to you how you need to believe or what you need to believe and to create, to, to look at this separation between each of the religions, shamanic work can free you from all of that is to understand that every tree is a is a temple that our mother earth is the temple that to give more credence to your intuition and your heart than to what politician or, or rabbi or, or priest is saying knowing that all of it comes from fear, not from hope, not from love, not from um, generosity. And the earth is incredibly generous. We have plenty of what we need. It's not, not, no need for people to suffer or to, to be starving unless it's a man-made crisis that people do. And they do that in order because they are feeling fearful that they don't have enough. But come on. Somebody was telling me that, that Elon Musk was saying that, uh, ask, was asked what he's gonna do with all these trillion dollars. And he said, they're gonna swim with it. So 
come on. You know, that trillion dollars, he can give it to a whole country and raise poverty, raise, raise, raise people from poverty, feed people all in one day. And, but he can't do it because he's still hold on to fear. And as long as our leaders, or people we choose are doing that. So for us is to really teach the shamanic work is to, to teach people to trust themselves, to experience the awe, the magic, the, the endless possibilities of this earth, but not just to believe in it, to own it, to know it, embody it, to truly, truly experience it with themselves. Knowing the elements, the four elements intimately, to be friend with them, to, to be friend with the climate, to be friend with all of that. You know, you can only hurt the climate if you don't, if you are afraid of it, if you're afraid of the weather or if you're afraid of all of it. So we, we live in a society of fear because it's easy also for them to control us. So, yeah, so um, for us as teacher of shamanism, we really, uh, and go back to this idea that we are really not spiritual teachers. We are teaching survival. Uh, we are teaching how to be practical, using spirit in this world. And I think that it's a, that's a huge difference between shamanism and other practices. Because, <clears throat> yes, of course we are. We believe that everything is spirit. <laughs> Of course, but um, those spirits are like any other tools, like herbs and plants and water and rocks and crystals. They're, it's just tools to make our life here on this earth more peaceful and harmony and abundance for everyone not just for the few thank you for this really powerful answer um it's very important message that you had to share here and tapping into all different realms like at, really at a global level and how bring it back to shamanic teaching and what it can actually do to us individually, but also really globally and, and really to embody all of these beautiful nature's essences, but also to share, right? And all these yeah, teachings and gifts and abundance with other people. So thank you for this beautiful answer, Itzhak. And yeah. We're coming to this close, so I just want our audience to know how they can find you and what your offerings are that will be coming up. Is there anything that you would like to share here? Um, well, you can always look up my uh, website, uh, which is my name.com, it's Uh or If you like, you can be add yourself to my newsletter list and you'll get um, every two weeks or every month uh, a notice about a new workshops or teaching. Uh, I'm pretty much dedicated myself now to teaching uh, healers to become shamanic healers. Uh, I want to pass on my whatever gift that I've received onward um, and uh, so a lot of my courses are basically geared for professionals, for people who want to learn more and to apply that to their teachings. So I'm going to do that in London and I'm going in uh, November um, and I'm going to be in Israel in November uh, talking ad about food and, and uh, how it's related to our shamanic practice. Um, and then um, all kind of different webinars and then of course if you are a healer and you want to learn uh, limpia or other um, indigenous techniques 
you are welcome to join me in Ecuador uh, for a trip that I'm taking uh, every year, a group of small a group of healers to teach them uh, almost everything that I know. I'm trying to. <laughs> so it's like um, eight days in the upper, in the high Andes of Ecuador, and then eight days in the Amazon, uh, where we do plant medicine and learning about box and um, herbs and of the Amazon. Um, it's all in, in a way to uh, bring you to to have confidence in, in uh, incorporating shamanic teachings and healings in, in your practice. So you can do that. And um, great. Or you can email me from, uh, from my website. Great. Thank you. And I also know you have three books and also one that you just mentioned, mm -hmm. uh, Shamanic Transformations, True stories of the moments of awakening so uh, all of you can also of course read that further for yourselves and i also know it's like you offered the audience a gift uh, which is also a written booklet in the form of pdf entitled the shamanic art of holding space and paths and heaters protection so that's also really wonderful if you could share maybe a few words about this that would be great too most people think that empathy is a wonderful thing to 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 have a, a quality to have and of course most healers are empath because otherwise you'll be a carpenter but <laughs> i'm not saying that carpenters are not sensitive but uh but uh, working with your hands so but you need to learn that hands are um, absorbing other people's energies. And you need to learn how not to absorb that energy and bring it into you or making it your own. And so if you are working with people uh, as a healer, uh, you're exposing to a lot of different energies and sometimes like five, six, seven, eight people a day. Uh, or if you're a receptionist or if you are working with just a, a, a around a lot of people and if you, if you are an, an empath you probably absorb like a sponge all of those uh energies and sometimes you can come really happy during the day and you're in, in the afternoon you're schmate you're like um, nothing happened you're like very we are sick because you absorb all this energy so how do you create a shield or how you clean yourself and energize yourself and how not to take all of that inside you. Um, I teach that, but I thought it would be really nice to uh, have a little booklet like that so people can have a, uh, an idea uh, and start protecting yourself. Thank you for that generosity, for sharing that. And uh, yeah, I just want to make sure to the audience that we have all the links below this video. So please make sure to get those links and how you can find Itzhak and more about his work and his books. So I just want to say here, thank you really deeply from my heart, Itzhak, for sharing this space and sharing your beautiful knowledge and wisdom to all of us. It's been really wonderful and beautiful, very precious to have you here. So thank you so much. And you've been always an inspiration to us. And thank you also for the support in our directory. So thank you. Thank you. It makes uh, it makes me very happy to uh, to ha to have a, a support system to Shaman Portal. Um, I don't see it as a it's, an, it's not a competition. It's it's a, actually a beautiful way to um, see the vision of us that you know to expand our community to expand the the, the agents of change. Um, to expand the people. Because I, I do believe that the more people that are doing shamanic work, um, not necessarily spiritual work, but shamanic work that is connected to the earth, uh, the, the, the faster the tipping point will be. People who are more important, more interested in uh, keeping the earth in balance. And that, that really, the whole trick is about that. It's about how do you keep the earth in balance? 
which is the earth is us. It's not separate from us, but it's how to keep ourselves in balance and the earth in balance and humanity in balance. What, that is one of the things that uh, one of my teachers used to say. Thank you for reminding me. <laughs> there are three principles of shamanism. Keep yourself in balance, keep your family in balance, and keep the world in balance. So the balance is what we are looking for, and it's so hard to keep. Thank you. These are, I think, the best closing words <laughs> from you, Itza. Thank you so much for yeah. your time here. Everyone who's viewing and participating, thank you for also taking your time of your day and to be with us here and to receive all this wonderful, beautiful wisdom from Itzak that has been shared with us today. And we hope to see you at our next interviews around the Cosmic Fire. <laughs>